Hello all and welcome to the Mug Life DIY. I am Julia and I am so excited that you decided to stop by my channel. So we're gonna jump right into project one. We are taking these two Dollar Tree signs. Now I was super excited when I saw this huge fence sign. I'm not quite sure if it's new, but it was definitely new to me. I flipped it over because I really liked the little galvanized, um, what is that? Uh, pot, no, mm, water, watering can. Wow. <laughs> and took that off. And then I took the label off the back because the back is now going to be the front. Now it was attached with some string and staples. So I was sure to take those staples out as well. And I really loved this contact paper that I found at Dollar Tree as well. I'm not quite sure if this is either a new product or an old product, but it was definitely new to me. So I trimmed off a piece. Now, word of advice, I definitely wish I had cut a little bit wider um, because it did start to come up on the edges. I thought it would be a little bit stickier. I guess my thought was I've used the wallpaper, Dollar Tree wallpaper so much that I kind of think that this will work the exact same way, but it definitely didn't. So cut a little bit wider just so you can fold it over and you will have plenty of um, space to, you know, push it down and make sure it stays. Now with contact paper, the wrinkling is always an issue with me. I have tried several different ways of doing it. And the best way that I got it was using that jumbo popsicle crafting stick. I just kind of slowly peeled it and pushed it and it definitely got all the bubbles out, but it wasn't as easy as this looks, or maybe I'm not making it look easy, but I definitely went slow and I made sure that any bubbles or wrinkles or anything like that that would bother me was not seen. So I just kind of pushed that out and smoothed it completely, flipped it over, and then I began cutting out little triangles at the very top because I'm going to begin to fold those pieces over the top section. So the entire back piece will be covered as the front piece. I hope that makes sense. But we're just going to be folding over and kind of wrapping it like a gift present. Um, that's the best way I can think of explaining it. But it definitely, as I said, it would have been a little bit easier if I had left a little bit more. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, in the rush of the craft, who knows. But it still turns out I just definitely had to push it down quite a few times. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to last in the long run. So I will let you guys know. But I just, I love this mint and the floral. And I definitely, it just reminded me of spring and it made me happy. So I'm going to flip over all of those sides and use my X-Acto knife just to make sure I had really exact and precise cuts. So I took that adorable little sign that we cut apart, the Happy Easter, and I'm gonna take two jumbo craft sticks and make it really look like a fence post. Now, I am so proud of myself. <laughs> I actually thought of painting first before I glued. That is a rarity for me. So I just kind of dry brushed some white acrylic paint on the two jumbo craft sticks, glued everything down, and that's it for that project. How simple and beautiful is this project? And it is a really fun Easter sign that you can make. So project two is going to take that adorable little bunny that was from the other Dollar Tree sign, and we're going to make a magnetic sign. Now I have used this little crate several times, and I actually made an Easter sign with it. Um, I believe two years ago. So I'll have to have that video linked below. So I just popped the magnets that I had already had on just so I could replace them and position them so they wouldn't be seen on my little bunny. So I glued them to my little fence, gate and fence, bucket, fence, fence thing. <laughs> and then I glued it to my bunny and you'll see what we're doing in a moment but I just made sure that would stay and be secure. I took some of my Chanel Dollar Tree yarn, which I just adore this color. It's, I'm not quite sure, it's kind of a blush, but it's 
oh, it's just so pretty. And we are going to be making a little bunny cottontail. Now I wanted something just really fluffy and springy. And this was the one that I gravitated towards. So we're going to make a little cottontail with it. So I just wrapped the yarn several times around my hand. Then I took a smaller piece of the yarn and wrapped it towards the center and pulled as tightly as I could. Now, if you've never made pom-poms before, it's a really simple pr process. It's just takes a little bit. <laughs> so I cut all of those loops. I began giving it a little bit of a haircut. Now my process in doing this is I just slightly turn it kind of in a circular motion and I did find some sharper scissors. I definitely recommend having a nice new pair or some that perhaps your kids have not used to cut paper with. <laughs> That's definitely a must with this Chanel. It definitely frayed, but I loved that. I kind of thought it looked more like the fur, which is kind of like what I was going for and just trimmed and made it as circular as possible. Then we're going to take our hot glue and glue that little pom-pom down to the little bunny butt <laughs> and push it down just to make sure it is nice and secure. Then I took some Dollar Tree floral foam and glued all of these three pieces together. I felt like I had more, but this was all I could find. So that's why I only have three. And I'm taking, I believe this is boxwood from Walmart. I have had it for quite some time. And I'm just going to be filling up this greenery basket centerpiece kind of idea. Now, I am not a floral person. I always tend to go for more greenery than florals, but if you love floral, definitely go for it. Add lots of floral to your arrangement. Just whatever makes you happy is what you want to decorate with your home. Now, I love these Dollar Tree picks. These are just so beautiful. I love how it has that white kind of... Uh, I don't even know how to describe that like white texture that's on the flowers and the greenery, but it is just so pretty. I believe I bought these last year, but I have seen them continuously at the Dollar Tree since then. So I know you can pick these up and I just began kind of sporadically placing them. Now I wish I had picked up a few more because I only had two of these little picks. So I cut them apart in disperse them as best as I could. But I do believe if I go back, I'm going to try to find some more of this specific pick and fluff it out even more. But I just think it's super pretty and it's definitely springy, but very neutral. So it could go with a multitude of decor styles and you can see how the little bunny just places right in the front. But because it's a magnet, we'll be able to take the bunny off flip it around and use this decor at any time that I want. <laughs> now, here is a fun tip that I love using. Now, I always save all of my little greenery stems from pretty much everything. And so what I do is I actually use those stems and I was able to take some of the lamb's ear that those stems aren't as long and I was able to place them sporadically using those stems. Now, because I just wanted it nice and green and fluffy, you wouldn't have to do this if you used different picks. But this is just what I had on hand, and I really love the lamb's ear, how it just complemented that other pick that I loved so much. So you can see I'm just kind of placing it on those little picks, and it works out great. All right, now project three, I bought this little, oh man, faux cutting board because I liked the image. So I am going to show you how you can kind of just upscale it a little bit and create a few little pieces to match your decor a little bit more and just to make it look a little bit more finished. Now, of course, I had to pop off all those little silver pieces because they were just janky and didn't even cover the corners. Like it was 
I'm not quite sure Dollar Tree what they had going. So I just used my hair dryer, loosened the glue and popped those off. I painted all the way around my little frame with my white paint. I'm taking several different styles of ribbon that I love. One is a burlap, one was a really pretty pink color, and then one piece of twine. I know, don't ask, but I was just going with it. Now, I'm not actually going to knot this around. I'm going to use that little piece of twine, and I'm going to knot that around it and secure it like that. And once I have that twine nice and tight, I just began kind of fluffing out my ribbon. I wasn't quite sure if I, what lengths I wanted them, but I dovetailed all of the ribbon and the twine and the lace, and it just kind of had fun uh, cutting them up and spreading them apart and just seeing how all of them would lay. I did end up using a little bit of hot glue and cutting them a little bit shorter, but it's just kind of all about placement and seeing what I wanted and how I liked it all together laying flat. And as I previously mentioned, I did use some hot glue right at that center point and just kind of pressed it down just to make sure that it would lay as flat as I wanted. And that's when I kind of noticed uh, the ribbon was a little bit too long because it was covering up my adorable little sign that I love. So I just trimmed it back a little bit more. And my original thought was just to use some Dollar Tree push pins. These are the little blue velvet ones. I just adored them, but I was struggling. So I had to kind of think about it. So in the meantime, I took some of my white acrylic paint and kind of covered up those hot glue stains that the Dollar Tree yeah. So I am going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to trim off the backing of these little velvet push pins. Then I'm just going to hot glue them to the all, or mm, uh, <laughs> I'm mumbling. I'm going to hot glue them to all four corners of my sign just to finish it off. And I love that pop of blue. It's just so fun. So then I'm going to take some greenery, which is the lamb's ear up at the top. And then I loved this one green piece because it kind of matched the baskets greenery. So I just thought it was so fun. Also from Dollar Tree and hot glued and secured it. Now I didn't quite like how it was laying again. So just took a little bit more hot glue and secured it. And we're going to go right into our last project, which is also a really fun and simple project you can make this spring and Easter time. I'm going to take this Dollar Tree cross, which honestly, the hardest part of this project is sanding. Oh my goodness, it's all sanding. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree beaded garland and this little cross and First step was sanding. <laughs> Second step is I'm taking this aquamarine color, which I just adore, and I'm gonna go around all of the edges, the corners, front and back. Now, at first I did kind of a lighter coat. I wasn't quite sure um, which side I would prefer. Used my handy dandy hair dryer. I cannot be the only one that does this. Like. I can never find my heat gun, so I just end up using my hair dryer. <laughs> I, I really need to organize my craft space. It is a hot mess. So on the back side, I definitely did a more opaque finish just because I wanted to see the differences of the two sides and which one I would like a little bit more. So one side I did more of a lighter coat and then this side I definitely was heavy handed in my painting, but you just kind of have to decide which side you will prefer. Used my hair dryer again and began sanding. Now, I don't know why this one little cross was just so janky, but oh my goodness, I had to sand and sand and sand. So I'm just taking my white acrylic paint and I'm going over our dry aquamarine. <laughs> I had to think about that, the teal color. And I do all of the sides, the corners, let that dry with my handy dandy <laughs> hair dryer. And once that was completely dry, I flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. 
And what you know, what our final step is, yeah, it's sanding. So I definitely think I need to get myself a new sanding sponge. This one is, I believe, in its last days. So it was definitely struggling. So <laughs> it took me probably longer than it should have. As I said, this entire project, I'm like, is this sanding ever going to end? Like, <laughs> I was struggling. So what you kind of want to do is you want it to be kind of like a distressed, rustic look. The teal will kind of pop through, but <laughs> like I said, just keep pushing through. So I at first thought I wanted the beaded garland to go around the cross um, as I normally do, but I knew already that I wanted my cross to lay kind of in a more flat position. I wasn't going to be hanging it. So what I instead did was take the beaded garland and threaded both of the top or both sides of the string through the top side. And then I pulled it as tight as I could, kind of knotted it and then shoved. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really perfect craft words. I shoved it back into that little hole, secured it with some hot glue, and then trimmed those little excess pieces off. And then I took some greenery pieces that also are from Dollar Tree. Now, this is from another piece that I'm kind of just recycling that I made from Easter a few years ago and just kind of played around with it and just figured out which way I wanted the greenery pieces to kind of lay down. And then I just secured it all with some hot glue. Now, if you're not familiar with my magnet truck crate crafts, you don't understand my love and obsession with magnets. I haven't done a magnet craft in a while, so I was really excited to kind of refresh my magnets and do something as with the magnets that you can use for other times of the year. You can just pop that little bunny right off as you saw, and I'm just going to turn it right around and voila, you have a complete different piece. So it's like a two in one little crate. And I just adore this greenery piece. I think it is so pretty. And of course, the little happy Easter sun. I feel like this is the most I've ever decorated for Easter, but I am just really loving it. I love how it's just kind of a spring and beautiful look in my house. So I have definitely been adding more signs everywhere in pretty much every single one of my rooms. Now this is probably, mm, it's a close one for my favorite piece, the little cutting board. It turned out so pretty and so easy and simple just using this little Dollar Tree sign, what was already there and just adding my boho flair to it and anyone can do it. How fun is that that I hope this really just gives you lots of inspiration that you have lots of fun and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know down below which one is your favorite and I will see all of you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.